Hello, I'm Stefano Mazzardo. And I'm Giuseppe Giannotti. And we are two members of the Student Committee for Fans Forum in 2040, and we are pleased to introduce you the video interview of Fans Forum speakers. Good morning. It's a pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Gero Misbe. He was the first scientist to modify nerve cells genetically so that their electrical activity could be controlled with light. So my first question is, please introduce yourself and tell us about your professional background. Uh, hello, uh, ciao, my name is Gero uh, Misbeck. I'm a neuroscientist uh, at the University of Oxford in England and the director of the Center for Neural Circuits and Behavior here. As you can probably hear, I'm not uh, British. I'm from Austria originally, but have lived in the world for more than 20 years. First 15 years in the United States and for the past seven years in Oxford. Please give us a preview of your lecture at the Fence Forum 2014. Um, as you know, um, the occasion for the lecture is the award of the Brain Prize 2013, which I shared with five of my colleagues for the invention and refinement of optogenetics. So the new method of optogenetics will be um, the topic of my lecture, but I think as with every method, the proof is always in the pudding. So just talking about a method tends to be um, quite boring. So I'll actually illustrate what can be done using optogenetics to control the function of neurons in the intact brain. And um, I think the example that I'm going to use to do this um, is the regulation of sleep in fruit flies. Which are the advantages of optogenetics for research and potential treatment? I think the big advantages of optogenetics are fourfold. First, it's now possible to control an entire population of neurons whose positions can be distributed in the brain. The second advantage is that one can communicate with neurons non-invasively, wirelessly, um, while an animal is executing a behavior that's very, very hard to do with electrodes, which require mechanical stability. The third advantage is that we can use genetic methods to single out specific classes of neurons for optical control. And the fourth advantage is that we, as the scientists, don't have to make a decision anymore where to place our stimulating electrodes. Nature, in the form of gene expression patterns, makes that decision for us. Why should students and young neuroscientists attend to Fence Forum 2014? I think the Fence Forum is a fabulous conference because it features the whole breadth of neuroscience, it features really exciting speakers, but it's still a relatively intimate meeting. It's not nearly as large as the Society for Neuroscience conference, so there's much better opportunities for interaction. What are you most looking forward at the forum in 2014? Well, there's, there's two things. One is I'm going to catch up with a bunch of friends, many of the featured speakers a friend, some of whom I haven't seen um, in quite a long time. And the second thing, of course, is that it's in Milano, it's in Italy. I, uh, I love Italy. Um, I even, when I go there, I tend to speak some language that I think is Italian, but that uh, none of the natives seems to be able to understand. Do you want to leave a message for young researchers? Um, I think it's really important to follow one's genuine interests and uh, to study problems that um, strike the imagination. Um, if one does things for opportunistic reasons um, or because they are fashionable or because they are on the radar of funding agencies, because they are translational, I think it's a mistake. Um, in science, the biggest reward is to do something one loves and to give that up is really stupid. So this was my last question and thank to Dr. Gero Nisbeck for your kind participation.
and for everyone please don't miss in lecture and see you at fans forum 2014 bye bye